Welcome to the banks of Acorn Fishery. And this session is actually brought to you by Catch. So a big thank you once again to them for sponsoring this session. And I'll go through all the different details you need to know about that later on in the video. But a bit more about the venue I'm at, which is Acorn Fisheries. Personal experience, it's my bogey water. I've really struggled on it before. And uh, so I'm coming into this session thinking I really need to catch something here because if I don't, I'm not sure I can bear it any longer because it's not like this place isn't full of fish. It's got loads of 20s, some good 30s, a lot of doubles. There's plenty to go out and I've seen a few this morning. Every trip I've been here, I've seen the fish. I've just never managed to get them myself. I've filmed other people have them, much like I did this morning. I got here this morning and Mark's actually fishing just behind me, Mark Bartlett. He had a lovely uh, double mirror this morning. He had a lovely 20 the other day as well, which he sent me the footage of, which you're seeing right now. So some lovely fish to go out in here. I just need to get some myself. So solid bank is going to be an approach. What else would it be? It's mid-January, it's pretty cold. It was a frost last night. And I think I'm going to get pretty cold again tonight, which I'm very grateful I've got one of the huts. I'll go through that again in a, in a bit because you can fish in bivvies or huts, whatever you like. But let's get the rods out, find some spots, get some bait out, get some solid bags out, put the kettle on because I'm already cold. And hopefully we can get some fish this session. And apologies in advance for my voice. I've only just got it back. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. It was completely gone the other day. Well, the spots have been chosen and it didn't take very long, if I'm honest, because it is the same swimmer fish last time and I'm gonna fish the same spots as last time. Although I didn't catch, I was told they are good spots for this swim and it's no different now. It's been doing a lot of fish lately. So the right hander and the middle rod are gonna be going to the same spot which is to the island where there's like a row of reeds. There's a little pole there as a mark, there's like a swim divide, but there's no one to my right for a few swims and that's supposed to be a good spot. And I've also gone around and just put a little bit of bait around there as well. And then the left hand rod is going to the rushes to my left margin. And I, quite conveniently, they're exactly the same distance on the wrapping stick. So I don't have to think about what rods where and how much is on each rod. Both or all three rods are just shy of 12 wraps. Now that's not 12 wraps of 12 foot rods. These are nine foot rods. Whenever I put distance sticks out, I use the, the distance of the rods that I'm using. So 12 nine foot wraps is exactly the same distance to those reeds as it is to those reeds. And as I said, I've put some bait out on each of those as well. And the method of choice, quite obviously for me, is gonna be solid bags. So nice and small ones. I made a load up before I came, so I didn't know what the weather was gonna be like. It's been miserable for days and days and days. It's solid rain. It's actually glorious today, but I tied these up so I didn't have to worry about doing them on the bank. And if I get a few bites, I've got a few spares ready to go as well. In there is just a little bit of uh, sort of an active mix, ground bait, micro pellets, a inline lead, Gemini tidy stems, as I always use, and a little 12 mil wafter, citrus wafter, I think it is. A little bit of tubing, tubing's allowed on here. It's either that or naked line, no lead core or anything. And then straight through to 15 pound main line as well. I'm using my little nine foot dwarfs on this session. Perfect for this venue. Don't need to fish at great range. The size of fish I'm fishing for should be perfect. So I'm looking forward to getting the rods out. Unfortunately, we're down to one camera. Although it may look like two at the moment, I've bodged that one. Camera fell over when the wind blew, swung the door shut and I've smashed the screen on one of the cameras. So I'm using one at the moment. So apologies if it's not as cinematic and perfect as, uh, or as good as I try to make them normally. But we gotta make do with what we've got. One camera down, hopefully that's the end of my bad luck. We'll get these rods out and we'll start catching some fish. I hope. And please nothing else break. That was an expensive mistake. Well, I was kind of hoping I'd have had a fish before doing the whole segment about catch, but it's not happened yet. I'm not panicking just yet, but that will probably set in if I go to sleep tonight without having any signs of any fish in my swim. But as it goes, I still got a bit of confidence there. So hopefully something happens soon. But as I said, this whole session is brought to you by Catch. I've done lots of videos on them before. If you haven't seen previous ones, then I'm basically gonna go back to the very start of what you need to do to get onto a, a lake like this, which is on the Catch app. So. To start with, download the app itself, it's called Catch. I've already got it on here and opened it up and this is what you'll be greeted with on the home screen. Now, if you haven't seen this app before, the best thing to do to start with is to set up your account 
So obviously I've got mine already set up. This will make it a lot easier for you if you're booking a, a session anywhere else. Because when it comes to the final booking section, it will ask you to log in anyway. So you need to set an account up anyway. And you can log loads of things in there, your captures, notes on previous sessions, share stuff with other people as well, which helps other people's experiences going into fisheries. So it's not just somewhere to book tickets and book a venue or have a look around. It can also store a lot of information for yourself. But we'll go back onto the search function and we we'll go in there. I just go browse all locations. It should use the location I'm on. It's coming up with dates at the moment. I'm just going to skip that for now because say you just want to have a look at a venue and you're not sure when you're going to go yet, just skip those things and it will give you a list of locations in your area. And as you can see, it's picked up the acorn fishery is nearest to me. Funny that. So open that one up. And there we have acorn carp fishery up on my screen. So it tells you the location, how to get there and everything, view gallery. So the first one you'll see is the lake itself and I'm in peg 12. So if you have a look at that, you can work out exactly where I am in relation to the rest of the lake. And it also should show you where there's hut swims, where there's just bivvied up swims. And there's also a tackle shop on site and toilets and showers, things. That's all on the uh, facility section. I'll go into a second of a sc scroll across. You can see some lovely fish that come out of here. And hopefully one of these will be in the back of my net before I go home tomorrow. There's some lovely fish in there. And if I go into the main page of Acorn Fish, you've got an overview, facilities, like I said, you've got male, female shower, uh, showers, bait available, huts, and then get toilets as well. You can click on that and view all facilities. I'm in a hut today, and so it's going to be quite nice later on. It's getting down to about minus one, minus two. And it's, it's quite nice sometimes going on a session like this. You're going for a night. You don't have to take your bivvy and get set up. You can just chuck all your gear in there and you're sorted. So that's quite nice, but not every swim will have a hut. So you do have to make sure you, you choose one with a hut. Or if you don't want a hut, you just want to use your bivvy, you can do that as well. Also, I would recommend bringing a pod. You can get your bank sticks in some swims and there are some pre-drilled holes on these. I did that last time, but just to be safe than sorry, it's probably best you do bring a pod along. Stockwise, 10 to 38 pound in mirror carp, 10 to 36 in common carp. And I do believe there's some ghosties and quiet. Are they still in here? They are still in here. So I've seen those firsthand myself. So there's all sorts of different fish to go in here. Then you've got the prices as well. So say I wanted to book a place on here, I click book tickets, and then it will come up again with the description and things. And then I kind of click book tickets, arrival date. So I'll just put one in for Friday the 20th. And I want to do 48 hours. So we go over on the 22nd. Just one angler. You can check venues availability. But for now, I just want to go fish, so to hit continue, and it'll select a ticket. So there you can see 36-hour bivvy ticket, PM start, or 36-hour hut ticket, PM start. So you've got the options. It does tell you whether you're going for a hut or a bivvy. So I'm going to go for a hut ticket, because that's what I'm doing at the moment, and hit continue. If there's any issues with availability, it will tell you there. And I can see that pegs 14 and 4 and are, av are available. So I'm going to click on 14 and click check out. And here it's got all my details and that, and I can choose the rods and things and how many rods I want to fish, because you can fish two rods in here or an extra third rod, you can pay to have an extra third rod. And that's it, once you go through there, you go through to the payment system, you're logged on the system and you're all good to go. Well, after another interlude in B-roll sequence, as you can see, still no fish for me, but I did think I'd talk to Mark a little bit more about why you've chosen to go into the catch system as a fishery owner. How has it actually changed? Has it benefited? And I'm sure it has, that's why you've gone for it. So why exactly as a fishery owner have you switched from the system you did have to what you're doing now with the catch app? Uh, more primarily so, just so it's an instant um, service to the anglers. So like, rather than, because, of the nature of the fishery you know it's quite you know quite well it's it's quite a sociable place people yeah. you know fish as well in the winter when the lads are on the socials they want to fish close together um they're not too fussed you know they're off their syndicate or wherever they're fishing but they just want to get out with their mate get a few bites or or whatever and it allows them to just create a booking really instantly without having to ring us up because they phone us up we are quite a busy fishery um and what will happen is they'll ring and it'll be like, hello, can I book this weekend? It's like, sorry, we're full. They got to go back to their mate. He's at work, can't get hold of him. Then the days roll by, the bookings, you know, and yeah. so on and so forth. But with the app, they can just literally click and choose when they want to come, what swim you want. And it's in their hands as such. However, we're still on hand. Any 
not problems, but if you want to tailor your session to anything that you want to do that you can't possibly book on the app, then just call. We're there. We're there on the phone. Um, especially like sometimes we have work lads, you know, we're just on the outskirts of Bristol. Yeah. And we have uh, we have work lads, they fish the nights and go to work in the days. So anything like that, just give us a call. But like everything's there as well on the app. You can see all the information, especially if you add the fishery as a favourite. You can see all the latest catch reports, what pegs they're coming from, how they're getting caught. Just giving you more information for your session when you arrive, uh, especially if you're doing a shorter session and you want all that information just to get you get you you know on the ground yeah. running as as you go into your session um but yeah it's definitely it's definitely the way forward it's you know as well the more i think coming out of covid the, f the what highlighted to us was the phone calls yeah um and like someday just on an average day we were getting up to 150 phone calls and some of those were duplicate phone calls. It's just not sustainable. Yeah, is it? just answering stuff that we can provide that information on the app. Yeah. And you know, so it's just saving everybody, you know, everybody time and, you know, minimal effort to, to get your session booked and make it nice and easy. Perfect. It seems like a win-win all round for both angler and owner. Back to this session, since I've last sat down in this swim a couple of years ago. I believe a bit more differences happen with stocking, what's going on, because I remember at the time last week, there was a lot of nuisance fish and bait things were slightly different than what it is now. Yeah, so like whilst we're on the subject, basically, um, back along when you would have come, we sort of, it wasn't a hardcore rule, but what we were saying was like, oh, we'd appreciate boily only. And the reason was that was because we drained the lake, desilted it. However, when we reintroduced the fish, they bred like crazy as they do in like, yeah. you know, nice, you know, nice environment when you fill a, a, a pond back up that's been dry for a while. Um, and I took out, in the end, I ended up taking out £16,000 <laughs> of small carp. I remember you to, showed me last week, oh, just netting them at the margin, there's so many of them. Enough to drive anyone crazy. Yeah. However, so that, that in place at the time was like, look, we'd appreciate boily only just to keep the weight on the fish because mm -hmm. any other food going into the pond was just getting decimated by these little bars of soap and, yeah. you know, they were just ravenous. Uh, however, all that problem's been sorted out. Um, they're all gone now. And uh, and yeah, so we can give we can give the rain back to the anglers to use whatever baits and tactics they feel. Um, the only one bait rule is no nuts or peas. Yeah. So anything else, if you want to feed whole boilies, crush them up to a ground, you know, like a, a crumb, pellets, particles, whatever you want, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, yeah, no worries, absolutely at all, because the fish are holding weight and they're big and they're nice yeah. now. It was just just at that time when they were struggling to keep the weight on. Because uh, mm -hmm. obviously, as a fishery, and I'm the same. I do a lot of fishing. I don't want to be, I don't want to be dictated to on like how I want to fish and all of that. You just mm -hmm. want everybody's got their little yeah, tactics there's, there's and edges nothing, that they want to use. Frustrating than liking the look of a venue, then reading the rules list and still reading the rules list <laughs> and still reading. Yeah. It's like okay, maybe not. Yeah, and like we. You know, getting onto the rules, we've pretty much got, we've, you know, I, I like to say like five rules. Once you read past five rules, I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm just dozing off. Yeah. Um, so it's just main thing is just respect the fishery. Yeah, we want you to obviously enjoy yourself the most you can. Um, treat the fish with the greatest care that you can possibly treat them. If you're new to it and you've not caught a big fish before, keep the fish in your landing net or in a sling come and get someone we can come around we can help you we'll show you how to lift it properly we can do your photographs on some proper cameras and create you a memory for a lifetime um, we're like we're here to help uh, and and we also want you to enjoy yourself the best you possibly can in your session um like fishing wise we just say barber's hooks and uh and no no swivels above your yeah. above your Which leg. This is a pretty standard for a lot of fisheries, isn't it? Yeah, just you say, <coughs> you know, like carp fishing's been around a long time now, so you should not you should all be aware, but there's enough information out there for you to see however you're fishing that you're doing it in the proper proper manner, you mm -hmm. know. And lastly then I suppose, as we haven't been interrupted, what would you say for someone coming for the first time, or for the fourth time in my case, really looking for that first bite from here? Tactics wise, how would you expect them to go about it? Depending on the time of year, you know, obviously when the water's a lot warmer, the fish are moving around, they're going to eat more food. Mm -hmm. However, you can still catch them this time of year over, over bait. Um, I caught that fish last night, or like early hours this morning, I caught that just over a little spotted area, just of some micro pellets, some uh, ground down boilies and, and a few maggots. And 
although a lot of people come here and they think because it's a small water that you've just got to try and nick a bite with a you know like a little PVA bag or a yeah. single look bait and, and that's quite often not the case you know there are there's a sufficient amount of fish in here there's a, you know 400 400 proper fish in here um and they eat and they eat a lot of food yeah. so like you don't have to be too shy obviously we're here now is going to be minus one tonight so us putting in five kilos of 20 mil boilies work, yeah. is probably not going to be the one however i would say that you just want to be confident in your approach and set a nice trap that you can put your rod out you can you know it's a tricky little water oh, tricky but it's a pre it's a pressured <laughs> it's a pressured water they see you know they see a lot of anglers so i think just be confident in your approach get it set get it right and also sit on your hands a little bit mm -hmm. and let that let the fish come to you because yeah. the more you know you've seen it loads of times joe you go fishing and if we're the only ones here and we're on this side of the lake all, all of there. a sudden you're thrashing yeah. the lake to a foam and then they're over you know they're over the other side before you know it so you just be a little bit stealthy but still yeah, nice well, and confident they all went out well i'm not going to redo them i know they're sitting pretty unless something occurs and one of them needs to be doing i'm happy with them i think you said a few people are coming opposite later so if they start casting out later on we push them around we're both here till tomorrow so surely between us we get some some more fish for the camera i'm confident i'm confident that we'll i'm confident we'll get a couple of bites uh like i fished it i fished it just before the weekend and uh, had a couple like you know nice nice 25 pound mm -hmm. mirror as well so yeah there's a few good fish coming out there's plenty plenty of fish out last week uh with you know quite a quite a few twenties as well, so it'd be nice. It'd be lovely to get a nice big twenty pounder. Um, yeah, and there's a few there's a few special ones that are due out, so you never know. Lovely. Before or after the barbecue you're doing? You promised. I'm me, saying you after. Promise me. Meat. I'm saying food food for us first, and then we'll catch the big column. <laughs> Sounds good. No more than five minutes had gone by when one of Mark's rods busted into life, resulting in this lovely old mid double common. Unfortunately, in my rush to get around and film, I forgot to turn the mic on, but I can assure you he was telling me about how professionally I was fishing and how he's perplexed that I wasn't catching and he was. Anyway, I got back to my swim, enjoyed the lovely sunset and settled in for the night before the cold hit in. Just watching tiny little wren jump around the swim. Such cute little birds. I think they're one of the UK's smallest, I think second from smallest. Anyway, he's getting his breakfast and it's about time I had mine as well and something to warm me up. It got down to, I think as low as minus five last night and it proper dropped off. As soon as the sun went down, we had some food. We had uh, some uh, fish and chips actually in the end. We were gonna have a big barbecue, but it was so cold we thought, let's go to the local takeaway get some fish and chips and that was nice or somewhat warm and then uh, both settled in for the night to be honest i got in the bed chair watched some stuff and fell asleep unfortunately wasn't awoken until it was getting light again this morning so it was nice and warm in the bed but as soon as i came out so where was the nice up you have the hangers the bobbins the reel everything covered in frost it showed me just how cold it was and yeah minus five i think it got down to nothing happened for me nothing for mark nothing around the lake so not a lot to report the only thing i've done this morning is just freshened up new rigs uh, or new solid bags and put them back out on pretty much the same spots so the left one same spot middle one same spot but the right one i just thought i'd move to the right of the swim so rather than having two on a spot if fish come across that, i'm sure that middle one will pick up a fish but the right one just moved on to where i've seen some bubbling this morning i saw some bubbling there yesterday as well and from recollection i remember seeing bubbling there last time i was in this swim a couple of years ago so i'm starting to think it could be some kind of natural pocket of air that keeps bubbling up but i gotta go by what i can see at the moment and hope that there is some fish feeding and try and salvage this session today. I think I'm just about going to keep my voice. It, it almost went last night, but we're uh, we're still hanging on there with some kind of vocal cords. So hopefully the carp will give me something to shout about later on, and I'll salvage this session and salvage this trip. Finish my coffee, have some breakfast, enjoy the morning sun, and I keep walking around on the bank, keep my toes warm because it is still freezing. <laughs> I 
I think I've given these long enough. Unfortunately, they haven't done it for me this session. But I thoroughly enjoyed my time here, as I always do. It's always good to see Mark as well. We had a nice social last night, enjoyed our fish and chips. And it is a lovely venue for socials and sharing huts if you wanted to do that with people, maybe bring some along with you. It's a lovely venue. And despite it being so close to the motorway, it doesn't really affect the fishing here. You get used to the background noise and it's not that loud because of the big bank behind me. And although it's fairly close to Bristol Airport, again, you don't really get many planes. So it's quite a tranquil place, an enjoyable place to stay. And as, as I've already mentioned, I stayed in the hut last night. And I'm glad I did because although it's still cold, it wasn't as bad as it would have been if I was in a bivy, I'm sure. Because getting down to minus four, minus five last night, I think it was. And it's barely got above freezing all day. The sun's out and it looks nice, but places that haven't seen the sun are still frozen, still frosty. So it has been a very, very cold session. Well, I'm going to have to get back down here. I'm going to have to come down in the summer I think and make a point of it this year because I always forget to come back and I always end up doing a session on here in the middle of winter or when it's really busy on a match and I'm not giving this place the justice it deserves because I've seen some of the beautiful fish that are in here. Mark caught a couple on this trip and I've seen other people catch previously. There's some lovely lovely fish in here but I just keep seem to be coming when the weather isn't the best. We've had wet and windy weather for weeks now and then the day I come, it drops down to minus five. So uh, <laughs> there's a bit of a excuse, I know, but it does mean I will be having to come back. I've lovely, enjoyed my time here. Big thanks again to Mark for having me down. And of course, if you want to get involved in fishing this place, do go into the Catch app and find this place, Acorn Fishery, and book yourself on for as short as a session as you like or a nice long one. Because I think this sort of setup, if you're someone that used to do big trips abroad or maybe can't quite do that anymore because of family restraints or money things, whatever, this sort of venue, which has some lovely fish in it like this, and still has the luxury of showers on site, a tackle shop, toilets, and huts you can stay in. You can really cater this place to as, as long as you want to do a session, whether it's a short one with a bivy or a longer one using a hut and, and really setting up your, your, your home for a week. You can really do that. So yeah, do check it out. It's a lovely place and I will definitely be back because this place hasn't seen the last of me. And I really, really, <laughs> want to catch something from here and i'm sure i will one day so please uh like the video if you did subscribe to us if you haven't done so already hit the bell icon and i'll see you again soon hopefully when it's a bit warmer and they're more likely to go off hey ho that's fishing <laughs>